Hey guys, welcome to yet another edition of Anoda Digital Storytime. I'm so glad you joined me today and let's dive right into this. All right, well, you know, I like to start things off with my favorite game. It's called Guess the Sound. I want you to grab a friend, grab a parent, see if you can guess what the sound is. Here we go. Let's get started. One, two, three. Whoa, that was kind of weird. I don't know what that was. Let's hear it again. <laughs> hmm, I don't know. But it's your turn to guess. I'm going to give you three seconds wait time. Say out loud what you think it is. All right, do you mean drum roll? It is a gray fox. Now, I wouldn't have thought a fox would make that sound, but evidently that's the sound they make. Wow. Oh, cute fox. Well, guys, today I thought I would share a little bit about books with you. I wanted to read a little bit of this book. It's called Caring for Your Dog. And I wanted to talk to you about some of the major things in this book. And a lot of this will be a review to you, but some of it might be something new. So, of course, here's the front of our book. It's called Caring for Your Dog. And that right there on the front, in big letters, is the title. That's the title of the book. And usually the title will tell you something or a hint about what the book's about. Now, a lot of books have the author's name on the front, and this book does not have the author's name on the front cover. So let's see if we can find it. All right, this page is the first page in this book, Caring for Your Dog, and it's called the title page. And on the title page, you're going to find the title right here, Caring for Your Dog. We just saw it here, so here it is again. Kind of like why they call it the title page, right? Because the title's on it big. And here we have the author. The author, the person that wrote the words, was Jill Foran. And right here is the publisher, Weigel Publishers Incorporated. The publisher is the people that puts the book on shelves, and they buy the paper, and they put everything together. So Jill wrote the words, and Weigel Publishers made the book, the physical book that we're looking at now. Well, guys, here's a very important page. This is called the Table of Contents or the contents page. And you can see it right here. It'll either say contents or table of contents. It'll say one or the other. And I want you to notice that this is the biggest word on this page. There's a lot of big words on this page. They're not written in sentences, but this is the biggest one. And that tells you what's going to be on the page. So I want you to pay attention to big, bold letters and big, bold words in a book. And we'll talk more about that later. But right here, each of these titles right here is the title of a chapter. So roll call is on page 26. It's the chapter and the page number. So if we wanted to read about frequently asked questions, we would go to page 30. All these different things right here is a separate chapter and they each have their page number listed by it. Here's more chapters right here. Like for instance, the life cycle of a dog will be on page 10. So the table of contents, if you're doing research, is really important because it can help you find information about the animal or anything. Any, Let's say you're looking at a plant like roses. You could look at the life cycle of roses and a good place to start to find information about the life cycle would be on the table of contents. And the same is true about dogs. If we're doing a report about dogs and we only need to know about the life cycle of a dog, we'd only have to look at pages 10 through 12 to read about the dog's life cycle. So we'd want to look there rather than reading all 32 pages of this book. We could just read about the life cycle on page 10. All right, so quick question. You can pause this video if you need to, to look. All right, on what page would you find information about what dogs eat? All right, so I'm gonna give you three seconds. If you want, you can pause and just say out loud what page it would be on. Information about what dogs eat. You would find that on page 16. If you said page 16, you are right because it says dog diets. That's what dogs eat. Diet is food things an animal eats. All right, here we go. Next question. On what page would you find information about grooming dogs? Grooming means taking care of their, uh, their fur and their cleaning them, making sure they're clean. All right, grooming dogs. What page? All right, here you go. If you said page 20, you would be right. Great grooming. 
that's how you find out about grooming dogs. And look, that dog looks well groomed. He looks really happy about being groomed. All right. So here we are. We looked at one. We're looking at chapter one, Puppy Pals. And I want you to look. Big and bold texts are important. Yes, I did spell that wrong. I spelled it test. Sorry. It's supposed to be text or words. Big and bold words are important. Now, look, I see in the text, there's words that are bold. Bold means it's darker. It's the word stands out from the all these other words here aren't dark and they don't stand out. But this word breeds does. And the same is true of these two words, species and domestic. These words stand out. And the reason that they are bold like that, or sometimes they'll be italicized like this one, is bold words are important words. The definition is usually in the back of the book at a place called the glossary. A glossary is kind of like a little dictionary in the back of a book. So, big takeaways from this book right here, this page. You need to look at big and bold letters are important. And that goes for inside a paragraph and at the beginning of a paragraph. Look at that. All right, so here we are again. Big and bold texts are important. They tell you what the text is about. And right here we have text that says pet profiles. And it gives you detailed information about each of these different kinds of animals. We have the Chihuahua, the Sharpei, the Bisenji, the Siberian Husky, the Border Collie, and the Golden Retriever. I think that's Mr. Sanders' favorite right here. What's your favorite right here? Go ahead and tell me. Say out loud what your favorite would be. I know a lot of people like the Noble Chihuahua. And right here we have another word that's in bold. It says purebreds. I bet that's an important word because I bet all of these are certain breeds of dogs that are purebred dogs. And so they have a certain pet profile to their breed. Well, guys, here we are in the glossary. Now, I know this doesn't say glossary here, but, you know, it says word snow, and that's just another way of saying glossary. So if you ever see a glossary, it means a dictionary, a small dictionary, or words to know. Like Mr. Sanders read a book the other day, and it had some technical words from Israel in it. And it had a glossary in the back that would tell Mr. Sanders what these words, uh, Israeli words, meant. Because Mr. Sanders doesn't know Hebrew. So if a word is in a language called Hebrew, I don't know what that means. I had to look in the glossary to find it out. Well, this glossary has... There's that word we just saw, purebreds. Look, purebreds is here. And then look in the glossary, purebreds. Animals whose relatives are known and in whom the same traits have been passed down through generations. So that word, if I didn't know what it meant, I could just look in the glossary and figure it out. Well, let's see another one, breeds. Let's look up domestic. Domestic, here we go. We got domestic right here, see it? Domestic. Let's see what it means, domestic. Tame and used to living among people, not wild. I think my daughter needs to work on being domestic because she's been so wild lately. My kids have broken three cups since I've been home. Can you believe that? Well, guys, here's another important part of a book. This is called the index. The index provides information about important subjects. For example, we could look up grooming. Grooming. We would find information about grooming dogs on page 5. 12, 20, 21, 22. And that's what these numbers are. They are page numbers. We could find information about Siberian Huskies what, on page 7, it looks like. And Chihuahuas, we could find information about Chihuahuas on pages 6, 18, and 21. Now let's focus on the index. The index is a very important part of the book. And one day when you're older, no matter what you're doing, you could be building a bicycle, you could be building a trampoline, you could be working on cars, a lot of you are going to have cars one day, and you're going to have to figure out what's wrong with them. And an index is a good place for you to look to get information about your car or about anything that you're working on. Or if you're doing schoolwork, you can use an index in high school. So the index is one of the most important parts of a book when you do research. So I've got two questions for you, and we'll be almost done. All right, number one, you can pause the video if you want to. I'm going to give you three seconds wait time. On what page would you find information about Siberian Huskies? What page would that Siberian Husky information be on. If you said page 7, you are right. Siberian Husky information is on page 7. All right. On what page, next question, on what pages would you find information about dog's life cycle? It, using the index. All right. Three seconds. You can pause if you want to. Say out loud what you think it is. Dog's life cycle. Well, I see it right here in the index. It says life cycle. I could find information about them 
on pages 10 and 11. So guys, that's how you use an index. Mr. Sanders' Israel book. I wanted to know about the Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is a special holiday in Israel. And one time there was a big war that was fought on the Yom Kippur holiday. So Mr. Sanders used the index to look up Yom Kippur. And then I read about that awesome holiday. And I also read about the conflict that took place, which was not awesome. Mr. Sanders doesn't like that at all. Finally, the last part of the book I want to talk about today is the back cover. This has general information about the book, and it's supposed to hook the reader's interest. So, for instance, this says, Caring for your pet offers young readers a complete guide to pet ownership, and each volume explores the basic supplies, knowledge, and preparation necessary to welcome a new pet into the home. Readers learn about the life cycle, grooming needs, behaviors, and feeding requirements of each pet. From folktales to pet peeves, this comprehensive series highlights the responsibilities as well as the enjoyment that a new pet brings. And there's the title right there, Caring for Your Dog. So it's just trying to hook the reader and tell you what the book's about. And guys, that is the end of our short presentation about parts of a book. I want you to remember glossary, index, and table of contents. Those are three really important things you will see on any tests you take to measure your knowledge. But we are all out of time. I had a great time talking with you today, and I can't wait to see you all again. Bye.